Welcome to On the Corner of Main Street, presented by Plaza Hotel and Casino in downtown Las Vegas. Here is Plaza CEO Jonathan Jossel, Russell Aaron, Gary Vickery, and I'm your host, Lisa Melmed. We have an exciting topic today. What are we talking about today, Lisa? So in our logo, we are called the Plaza Hotel Casino Bingo. And today the focus is going to be on bingo. Not only in our logo, but a lot of our shots that we have that you see on social media, it has best steakhouse, best bingo. We do like to brag about bingo a lot. Well, I am very passionate about bingo, but right. which is a strange thing being from England. I did not know anything about bingo. And I cannot take credit for bringing bingo to the plaza and to downtown Las Vegas. When I moved here in 2007, bingo was already a part of the plaza. But I will say it's had a very challenged and storied history here at the plaza and, and over the years. I recall coming here in 2007, there was a, a tired bingo room upstairs. And there really wasn't much focus on it. And the, the game kind of... Um, lost money but it was always justified in the sense of well it loses money but don't worry it, it brings people in here it's an amenity and then um in 2010 when we closed the plaza down for the remodel we actually took the game over to the las vegas club which at the time was a little crazy because we had to build out a bingo room there with Wait, all you, the took, you took the whole operation over to the las vegas club everything wow took the game over took the people over and we put it in the back of the las vegas club for anyone that remembers the las vegas club it had those very high ceilings in the back the game was there. We built out some walls. It was a, it was a temporary room. And it did okay. Um, but what it did do, which was smart, is it kept our customers. Because those customers are loyal customers. They would have gone somewhere else for the 12 months that the plaza was closed. Sure. At the time, did downtown have any other bingo? No. Okay. No. As far as I remember, there's never been bingo downtown with the exception of, I think, Binion's tried it around that time that we moved it to the Vegas Club. I think they thought maybe they could take some of those customers around 2011 2010 2011 okay and from what i understand from what i gather it didn't work out for them they lost money and they closed it down um we've been in a unique position where we've always been able to make it work we've always had a loyal following and we've been known for our bingo so we were able to keep the game going and then in 2011 we moved the game back over to the plaza from the las vegas club when we reopened and actually we identified that bingo was a a good tool for us we reopened in august with a super bingo for anyone that doesn't know, Super Bingo is like bingo and steroids. That's how you relaunched into the community with a big party of, of a big prize. One of, the, one of the grand opening elements of the plaza in 2011 after the remodel was uh, a Super Bingo game. Interesting. So we had a, a couple of, I want to say it was around 900 people that, that time, um, which was a good turnout for, for a game in August, which is not a traditionally good month in Las Vegas. Right. And I, we didn't remodel the bingo room back then. It, it was the same old bingo room. Um, but like I said, we had a loyal following, and they, they came back. And the game did okay. But then, I, I don't remember why, the Western Hotel Casino got shut down. And the food and beverage manager from there became the bingo manager at the plaza. Now, so This uh, is before you were in control of, say, of the operation. Did, yes, did, yeah, did, yeah, did sorry. the real estate company have the Western at the time? Because yes. I feel like you would know the answer if we had this. The, the real estate company owned the Westin and the Plaza, but I wasn't the CEO of the Plaza. Oh, okay. I wasn't, I get I wasn't it. the licensee. I was here on the real estate side. So I don't remember the reason why the food and beverage manager from the Westin got moved as the bingo manager at the Plaza. But it happened in around 2011, 2012. And uh, for lack of a better word, it was a disaster. Um, <laughs> okay. th he, he didn't know bingo. And it wasn't his fault. He, he I guess, was being, pres you know, we wanted to keep the guy around, wanted to keep his job, but he really didn't know bingo. So. He's running the bingo game, and, and I'm looking at the numbers thinking, gosh, this is um, this is not good. It's getting worse and worse. And when I eventually became the CEO, um, one of the first things I committed myself to was I got to figure out bingo. Bingo's got a history downtown. It's got a history at the plaza. We had a great database, but we were losing money on it day to day. The super bingos were still good for us, although we only did two a year at that time. And what I did was we reached out to a gentleman called Weldon, uh, Weldon Russell, who we'll have on the show later on, who, in my opinion, is the best bingo manager in the city. Um, he knows Keno and bingo better than anybody else. And we reached out to him. He had been at stations for 12 years. He was not working at the time. And I, we recruited him to say, look, we need a bingo expert here. We need someone to run this game. 
and well no, done. And with somebody, something like bingo, you have to eat, live, breathe. You have to be very passionate right. about bingo well, yeah, well, in order for it to be successful. Correct, but you also need to actually understand it. It's a math. It's a math game. You have to understand the offerings. You have to understand the prizes. You have to understand what you're giving people and make it something that they want to play. Right. And, and unfortunately, I didn't at the time. And I was learning the game, which I'm proud to admit I was trying to figure it out myself. <laughs> and we had this guy from the Western who was also trying to figure it out. And it wasn't going very well. So we brought in Weldon, um, who almost overnight transformed the game. And he, he, he educated me on the game. He educated okay. me what was wrong with the game that we were running. And he made it right. Because he's passionate. He already had a plan just sitting there waiting to be called on. You called upon him. Correct. And, he, right. and he understood what the customers wanted and he understood how to make the math of the game work. And, you know, we, we, when I got, <laughs> I tell a funny story, when I got my gaming license, one of the guests from the bingo room, a, a, a lady, came up to me and said, Look, I understand you're the new CEO. Whatever you do, don't change bingo. So I was standing there in front of the bingo room. I thought, What a strange comment. And I said, Well, well why? She said, Well, we come every day and we play bingo here. And I said, Yeah, I understand, but what makes you think we're going to change it? She said, Well, you know, uh, last year we won enough money that I bought my daughter a swimming pool. Did you um, hit some, some type of jackpot? or? So I said, well, did, she said, no, 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 we play every day and we win every day. I said, wow, that's that's fascinating. <laughs> I need to look into you. So um, This is where the math comes in. Exactly. So I sat down with Weldon and he explained to me how she was winning every single day. And it turned out she wasn't the only one. There was people, including this lady and her daughter, who were making a living in our bingo room because they had figured out a way to guarantee they were going to win. Um, and Weldon identified that. Weldon explained it to me, and we changed the bingo room. Unfortunately, those customers don't come back here anymore. But the bingo room al almost immediately became a better success, which is why we added it to our logo, Lisa, as you uh, asked. We wanted to really put the focus on it. We're the only ones downtown who offer bingo. And what was... Um, and, what and it probably kept a better environment for the guests that were coming. Now that the game got a little bit more competitive and exactly. the winnings were exactly you know, well, there's, there's, so there's, there's the way you can play bingo um, itself. There's ways which Walden will explain to us as to how people can buy the room and do other things. But there was another element, which is if your casino promotions that you do, where you offer multipliers and points, affect bingo. People are smart enough to figure that if they lose X in bingo, they can make it up on points in the casino. And that was happening as well. So there was there was a number of different things got wrong with our bingo room at the time. Um, there were just professional people out there trying to understand your business or the the, the business of the casino to take advantage of it. Correct. Advantage players is that what they're called? That's what we call them. And and we had quite a few in our bingo room. But what I what I realized with Weldon, and this is why I call him Well Done Weldon. Okay. Uh, because he. He fixed the room. He fixed the room overnight. And people say, well, you know, why, why the focus on bingo? And, um, you know, bingo's not a money maker. Bingo's going to die in the future. Bingo's, you know, a lot of questions about it. When In our industry, we have to have amenities. We have to have offerings that differentiate us from everyone else. We're the only ones downtown who offer bingo. And if we can have 80 to 100 people every session playing bingo, that's 80 to 100 more people in our building that like to do other things when they're here. They eat, they drink, they gamble, they play slots, they play table games. So our, our bingo demographic, it's not just bingo. It's what else do they do here. And right. what, I, what I identified was everyone who played bingo had an ancillary benefit to us, which is why a lot of things people do in the city aren't all money makers, right? Yeah. The, 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 many of the shows, many of the buffets, many of the uh, entertainment venues are not designed to make money necessarily but they bring people in and those people have an ancillary benefit to the property which is what bingo always was to us however with weldon we've been able to figure out a way to make money in bingo and then what i realized was we did this thing twice a year called super bingo and super bingo is uh, a giant game where you can have up to in, in our case a thousand people playing for close to two hundred thousand dollars not in days. the bingo room we take over the entire convention space correct yes they play in the big room um, and, and at the time, we did this twice a year, and I looked at the numbers. I said, guys, this, this might be the best thing we're doing. We're killing it. Let's do it three times a year. And, and, and well, I said, gee, Jonathan, that's, that's, uh, that's aggressive. <laughs> so we did that in 2015 um, and, and then 2016. And then I said in 2017, I said, guys, this is, this is really good. I think we should do this every two months. And he said, no, 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 no. you can't do that. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> I said, I, I don't know. I think we're going to do this every two months. And what we're going to do is we're going to commit to it, and we're going to be consistent. We're going to do the same weekend every single year, every two months. 
So now we do super bingo, February, April, June, August, October, and December. We do six super bingos first weekend of the first weekend of the month. Of and it goes months. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, you register yeah. on Sunday. You play all Monday, all Tuesday, and most people stay for Wednesday. These events have turned out to be better for us than many of the big holidays. Even uh, you could argue New Year's Eve because you got you got to imagine you got nine hundred to a thousand people. We are, we're a thousand room hotel here, so they're filling up close to fifty sixty percent of our occupancy, and all they're doing is playing bingo and and. Uh, Slots, the they're, all, they're all staying on property. They stay they're on eating property. at our restaurants. Well, there's a bigger part to it. There's a community. There's teams that come here. They all wear matching shirts and they fill the spots. And this is what they do. This is their annual trip to come play bingo or something along those lines. It's there's something to it other than just sitting in a room listening to to numbers. There's people that will even call in to sit next to their friends or they don't want to sit next to their friends. There's rivalries, like there's passion behind it. Absolutely. It's a it's a it's a huge thing. We now do six a year um for Super Bingos, but you know the biggest game in town is still at the South Point. They do a million dollar prize, but they only do it twice a year. Okay. Um you know you gotta have a big room. We we can only our room holds a thousand people max. Right. It really nine hundred and fifty is comfortable. Um, up at South Point, they can do 2,000 people, so that obviously allows for a bigger prize pool. Um, but we're, we're, we're very happy with where bingo is now for us. It's As I said, it's become a primary focus for us because it's allowed us to differentiate ourselves downtown. And I think, and we'll talk about this with Weldon in, in, in the, later on in the episode, which is, you know, people often say, well, is bingo going to stand the test of time? And I think he'll agree with me, which is people's tastes evolve people are younger now playing bingo than ever and we see now not only bingo doing well but it's continuing to grow and as people become a little older their taste will change and we'll see them playing bingo in the next 10 to 20 years so we see we see a bright future for bingo we actually remodeled our room last year we put in all new electronics all new lighting all new carpet all new av so it's a new room, and there's a new focus on it. So when you moved it from the plaza to the Las Vegas Club, and then when you brought it back, you built a new room then as well, or did it get rearranged? No, well, no. When we reopened in 2011, the room was exactly the same. We never did anything on the third floor. Okay. But then in 2017, we remodeled the bingo room oh, entirely. Okay. As with a, the rest of the, the convention area. area. Correct. Yep. With the rest of the convention area. Why have you introduced bingo slot machines? Why have we? Um, well, the the company called gaming arts were the ones who have introduced bingo slot machines but because we have a great bingo demographic and customer they asked us if we would uh, experiment them on the floor so we've had eight bingo games on the floor for the last couple of months they're doing nicely and we're now trying a new promotion around them where we're putting multipliers on them to drive more attention to them and more spotlight on them but um i i don't see them as similar funnily enough i think people that like live bingo will always like live bingo um Unlike Kino, where it seems like Kino does have more crossover between live Kino and, and Kino uh, slot machines, bingo slot machines are in their infancy and are going to take a little bit more time to grow. And, and you'll be able to find those those bingo slot machines up on the third floor, uh, right by the bingo hall, as well as on the casino floor. Down right by, by the, the cash, cashier cage. There. Correct. And up there on the third floor, you'll also be able to go and see Weldon, who we will have as a guest coming up next. He is the godfather of bingo, our bingo manager, Weldon Russell. I'm Steve Heitner, the guy who said those famous words, that's gold. So that's the name of my podcast, That's Gold with Steve Heitner. We try to expand your horizons. It's intense, but only for like seven seconds at a time. I've had relationships that ran, that ran about that. <laughs> we keep up on breaking sports news. Well, wait a minute. Drunks and fornicators, I think they met in the first round of their playoffs for the right to yeah. go to hell. I think <laughs> that was right. the way that worked, yeah. <laughs> that was the playing game. We are patrons of the arts. And then I also love the idea of the fictional autobiography. Well, I didn't want to be sued, as you've learned. <laughs> it's not <laughs> fun. And we take you new places. Stop first at the RV Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. I hear they have an amazing shit. road camp. Kill wing in there. That's amazing. <laughs> you gotta see. They actually have the first Winnebago that ever knocked the gear into the side pocket. I mean, <laughs> We're here for you twice a week. That's gold with me, Steve Heitner. We're back with Weldon, our bingo manager. He's been in bingo for 20 years. Weldon, how did you end up in Vegas? 
I actually came here when I was 14 years old. I worked in Vegas, actually down at the other end of Fremont Street at the Old Cortez for seven years. And I worked for Jackie Gone when he went in partners with Steve to buy the Golden Nugget. Steve who? Steve Wynn, oh. when he first started. Then I went to Australia for 15 years, introduced Keno over there, came back, worked for well, stations. Well done. You can't just say you went to Australia. <laughs> Why Australia? Did you originally come from Australia? What was your what was your ties to Australia? So was, it's far away from where we are here, so what are you doing over yeah. there? I went over and set up Keno for Australia, for the only casino over there. We built three more. Did they reach out to you? They headhunted yes, you? Yes, they came over here. They went to the gaming control board. They were looking for someone to tell, teach them Keno. Not, not someone, a bingo expert. Keno. Keno expert. And they, re they referred me to them, and they came down and interviewed me, and we talked for about six months, okay. and then I ended up taking the job. I was there for 15 years. I came back. I went to work for the Taj Mahal. In Atlantic City? Atlantic City. Wow. The current president owned it. And I was there for a year, and I did not particularly like the weather back there. So I moved back to Vegas, went to work for Station Casinos. I was there for 18 years. Wow. I ran Keno. I took over Bingo. I ran all their bingo games for 16 years. Did they just come to you and say, all right, hey, you do a good job at Keno. Go try this bingo thing. Or have you been doing bingo while you were doing Keno? I had never played bingo in my life. Oh, okay. And Kevin Kelly said, we want you to take over bingo since you're doing so well in Keno. And it went from there. You were referred a second time. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, from Station Casinos, I went to work uh, for a company in Dallas, and I was down there for three years commuting back and forth every week, which got fairly old, and I was just stopped uh, working there actually on a Thursday, and Michael called, asked me if I wanted to interview for the job here. I told him I'd be more than happy to come down and talk to him. I came down and talked to him and Jonathan for about an hour, hour and a half. They said, well, we'll get back to you. He called me up the next day, made me an offer. The rest is history. Some, some would say an offer you couldn't refuse. Well, <laughs> almost. <laughs> so, so before we jump into Bingo Weldon, um, your, your your voice—it's very interesting. Your accent. Are you? You have a little Australian in there, but tell the people, what is it about your voice that makes it so special? I got shot in Vietnam by a sniper. Part of the bullet hit my uh, carotid artery, and when they went in to fix it. They, uh, for whatever, I don't know what the word would be, but one of my vocal cords quit working. Wow. So is this before you got into Bingo and Kino, you were in Vietnam? Yeah. Back in 67, 68. In the Marine Corps. Good. Well, thank you for your service. Did, uh, that, I was going to say that too. Thank you for your service. Did you, um, did you know when you were young that you wanted to be in the casino industry and Kino and grew no. up to it or just fell into your something no. you were when I got out of the Marine Corps I was kind of limited because of my left arm it was weaker than, than uh, my right because the, the muscle on the left shoulder doesn't work so I got out of the Marine Corps got the first job I could get was right in Keno at the Fremont okay and I went from there so um, Lisa introduced you um, I would just like to add that as we talked about earlier Bingo is not an easy game, and we're one of the few games in town that is successful, and Weldon is the best bingo manager in the city. He says he's the second best. I'm not going to say behind who, but I think he's the best bingo manager I've ever met, um, and perhaps anyone's ever met because this guy knows bingo better than anyone. What is it that attracts you to Weldon running the bingo here at the Plaza? Well, we You're talking this guy up. I just want to know. Well, I'll let him answer that question. What makes you the best, Weldon? You're only good as the people you hire. Ooh. That is true. That's, that's been my philosophy through life. Uh, you know, a lot of people hire people that aren't qualified because they don't want a, their job threatened. I like to hire people around me that are the best of the best. And here at 
the, the plaza in the bingo room. I didn't hire them all. They are the best crew in town. I've worked with quite a few people over the years in bingo, and nothing like this crew. And we actually have a position that is a new uh, position in Vegas. It's a bingo customer service ambassador yes. who we bought on about two years ago. And his sole purpose is dedicated to the happiness of our bingo customers. That's smart. His job is to walk around the room, get to know them as much as possible, take care of them while they're on property, and ensure they're having a good time. He, he, he is the most incredible kid I've ever met. He deals with these people on a daily basis, both on the phone and in person, because he d takes a lot of Super Bingo bookings. Now, he answers the phone and he says, hi, Ethel, or hi, Mary. He knows their voice. Interesting. He <laughs> knows every single person that comes in for Super Bingo. So if there's 910 people in there for Super Bingo, he knows every one of them, their name, a few things about them. It's truly unbelievable. Interesting. Well, and his name is Reigns. Reigns, yeah. Reigns, and he used to work in marketing with Lisa over there, and we uh, transferred him into bingo um, to, to in this position because he liked to play bingo. He told me he likes to play bingo, so we gave him a shot at this, and, and Weldon's groomed him into perhaps a future leader of the game. Yeah. So, so Weldon, uh, you bought me an article a couple of weeks ago that referenced you as the godfather of Kino in Australia. Is that right. correct? Yeah. What does that, what does that even mean? Uh, I don't know. I went down there. When I went down there, it was the only casino in Australia, down in Tasmania. And I started Keno. That's what I went down there for. From there, we built a casino called Mendel Beach up in Darwin. Then we built one in, in uh, Alice Springs. And then we built one in Launceston. And I put all Keno in all three. Keno back there, down there, was doing a million dollars a month in handle wow. at all the casinos. It, the Australians like to gamble. Okay, that's that's pretty good. So the the article that came out um, identified you as creating the game in Australia, essentially. Right. Yeah. You say that so casually. That's amazing. You created a game in a continent. Well, I didn't create the game. I just took it to Australia. We actually computerized it. It was the first computerized Kino game anywhere in the world, and the uh, current Imagineering system was cloned from it. Wow. And the people that built. The Imagineering system here is Eric from Expertex, the system that we currently have. So, okay, so then after that, you came back and you went to stations for 12 years. Tell tell people like Gary and Russ, who've never worked at stations, or, or Lisa, what, what's the difference between working at a, a local casino like stations um, and, and a much bigger management style versus downtown Las Vegas? The pressure. That's all I can say. Are you saying we have no pressure here? <laughs> it's a different type of pressure. It's <laughs> when you work for corporate, you know, you're responsible for eight eight properties. There's a lot of heavy duty people above you. Push, 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 push. The pressure here from you is a little different. It's you're always pushing, but it's not like I got eight different people pushing. At stations, is that smaller team operation that we have here is what was that what drew you to downtown and to the plaza? I kind of like Jonathan's the way he was talking about what he wanted to do at the plaza. I thought I think we hit it off. He's been uh, very good to me since I've been here. Who are you talking about? You? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's a great it's a great place to work. I'm very impressed with everything that uh, Jonathan has done since I've been here. You have a very open mind, and you, and you listen. A lot of people don't want to listen, but you do, and you've learned a lot. I can see it in the day-to-day -day operation you. here. Thank you. So can our, our guests. The, uh, I get comments all the time about how beautiful and well, well looked after the property is now because it, <laughs> it was run down. And now it looks like a new property. It's magnificent. So so you tell me we have the second best game in town. Tell people what is the best game in town, in your opinion. Because I think we have the best game in town, but you think we have the second best game in town. Well, I only say second best because they're, they've got 2,000 seats and I only have Who's thousand. they? Who's they? South Point. They do run a good trip there, I have to say. Yeah. Because I think we have the second best rodeo 
arena in town, but the South Point has the best. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I, I think the South Point is a role model for many properties, so I have no, no shame in saying we're second behind them. They're it, a great number one. It's a huge property. It's a beautiful room. You went there where we played their million-dollar game. You know, it's, uh, it was well done. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have, to, I have to agree with you on that. Well, then do you regularly go out and play bingo? I used to. I used to go uh, when I worked for stations. I went out to a pr- different property, two properties every week, different ones, and I covered the whole city because you had to keep up with what was going on. So, so Gary, in, in though, what, we, what we do is we send out teams, <coughs> whether it's Weldon and two or three of the managers from Bingo, we send them to play in other games every single quarter to see what they're doing, how they're doing a different lead, to learn from them. You know, we're not, we didn't create Bingo. Bingo's established in this town. It's, it's been reduced, I guess, over the years. But we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just got to see what everyone else is doing, how they're doing it, and hopefully learn from that. We just have the grandfather of, of, of Bingo or Kino. The godfather, the godfather. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and so we do send our team out to play in other games to see what they're doing and to learn from them. And I think that's been successful. And guess what? They do the same to us. We have other managers from um, other properties playing Bingo here Every single Super Bingo, we, we have at least, I'd say, a dozen. We're the only ones who are doing it six times a year. You know, they're doing it three Super times bingo. a year. Super Bingo. That yeah, is, if, so. if you guys right. could explain to our listeners what Super Bingo is, I'm sure some people are kind of not familiar with uh, with what Super Bingo really truly what is. What is the difference between Super Bingo, Alden, and, and, and the day-to-day bingo game? Well, Super Bingo, is, uh, it's the prize money. We pay out $190,000 over two days. In the regular bingo room, it's a lot smaller than that. Is that like a collective of sums? Like the, this game will be worth five grand, this game will be worth ten grand, or is it like a hundred ninety thousand total? How does that work? We have uh, two days of bingo each day. We have nineteen two thousand dollar games. Then on uh, the, they have the coveralls twenty five grand on day one, and it's fifty thousand on day two. We also uh, and it's one hundred thirty dollars, which if you look at value for money, it's the best value of any of the big big games in town. And we give you uh, three nights accommodation for uh, 109 bucks. Wow. At the plaza, which is uh, very nice of Jonathan to let us give those rooms away that cheap. <laughs> Thank you. Is it? Is it? But the actual game is the same game. You still the waiting bingo's for, bingo, yeah. Yeah, you're just waiting on different patterns to be called right. each game. Yep. Do you guys understand what that is? You know, each kind game. of. Tell what's the what? Some of the names are pretty creative. Give us a couple of names for the for the patterns. Well, you got Hardway Bingo, which is no free space. You got the regular Bingo, uh, block of nine. So your cover nine, you just it's nine spots all together, just yeah, in a block. In a block. Then so, you got so. a block of eight, which is like a line of four and a line of four, eight eight numbers. You cover them all. You say bingo. Wow. We so, do have a very unique you know, room. You know you can do a Christmas tree bingo pattern. We should do that uh, for Christmas. No. We do the letter P. <laughs> he just said no. The letter P for Plaza, we do the letter C, letter X. I mean, there's all kinds of patterns. Uh, we do have one unique thing here at the Plaza in the bingo room. We, uh, I asked Jonathan two and a half years ago if he let me spend a lot of money and he looked at me like I was crazy. And, uh, yeah, there's your patterns. He said, that, well, how much, how long is it going to take to get our money back if we buy these things? And that's, you know, nine months to a year. It was quite a lot of money. He wasn't sure it was true. What are we talking about? What did we, what did we spend the, a lot of money on? We've got the only total room that's totally fixed base units. Oh, wow. They're all... 21-inch monitors at every seat. We've got 200 of them. Everyone else has got the handles where you carry them around, and they might have 20 or 30 fixed base units or stationaries. That, uh, everyone calls them something different. Okay. But we're the only one in town that, that went out and bought our own. They belong to us, and there's no never have problems with them. Handhelds have always got the battery drops dead or holds the game up. We, our sessions run very smooth and no problems 
when you were speaking about bingo patterns, I just have a quick story I wanted to tell you, Weldon. My first time that I've ever played bingo was down in uh, Laughlin, Nevada, about 90 minutes from here. And I went down to one of the casinos to check out their Kino room right before you opened the Kino room here. So what was that about 18 months ago we've opened Kino? Yeah. Okay. Um, first time in, I get down, I get all set up. I, I don't know nothing about bingo. First game in, I false bingo. And everybody started booing at me, and it was it was truly embarrassing. You you hit it or you false? I false. Oh, so you bingo. never really had it? No, I never really had it. Wow. And it was amateur. Yeah, it was really bad. And they and they say, oh, that was practice, didn't they? No, no, no. Everybody oh, really? looked at me. I mean, I was the youngest person in the room by about forty years. <laughs> That's like the biggest bingo party foul is falsely yelling bingo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I think if I had hit a bingo in the rest of that session, I wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Since then, I've exclusively paid uh, paid electronic. I, I, won't, I won't play paper. I won't well, trust well myself. Then, um, <laughs> while we have you here, because this is a, I think this is interesting to people. You know, we have advantage players in slots, video poker, uh, reels, video poker, table games. What, what does an advantage player in bingo look like? What can they do? Not in our game, because our games. Uh, perfect. But what does an advantage player look like in bingo? Um, well, I don't know what they look like, but I can tell you what they do. Yeah, go on. They come in and buy the room. They will buy, it's like at stations right now, there's unlimited cards that you can purchase for a machine. Right. And they've got two players that I know of. There are teams actually around Vegas that are running around station casinos. You and I go in, we have no chance to win if we're just playing 50 or 100 bucks. Because right. these, these guys are spending $500, $800 a session. And the prize is greater than the buy-in. They've figured out yeah. that they can buy the room, essentially. They can get their money back with three bingos. And the only way to combat that is to limit the number of packs you can buy. Exactly, which is what we do here. When I first got here, there was no limit here. Nothing. Oh, I know. I told, I, I told the story earlier of the lady who came to me and said, please don't change our bingo game. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, I bought my daughter a swimming pool last year with my winnings from bingo here. And she, <laughs> she wasn't lying. No, I know. I know. Well, I, I remember her. Well, we went back and checked because I can check. She would won over $80,000. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but that was amazing. She was an advantage player, and she's probably running around somewhere else doing this. Um, she is. She's down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, well, well, I think one of the things that I get asked the most, and I'd love to hear your perspective on it, I, I have my own perspective, is people will assume, and Gary just made a joke about being the youngest person, people will assume that bingo is only played by old people, and ultimately when those people um, uh, move on, bingo might eventually die. What would you answer to people who think that bingo doesn't have the longevity to last? I, I don't believe that for a second. We get uh, probably 80% of our business comes off Fremont and the hotel itself. And my girls are continually teaching people how to play. They come in, they find that it's a great way to sit down and relax, spend an hour. They're not on the slot floor. They go back down to the slot floor for 45 minutes and come back to bingo. And the average age now in our bingo room is probably 40. So it's a myth that it's everyone who's 65 and over that's playing bingo. Yeah, it's a real myth. So you, The crowds are getting younger. You say that because we have sessions at like 11 and 1, so you're saying they come for an hour, they go down and have an eat or, you know, like drink or something, and then they come back up for the yep. next round. Yep. They get that addicted that they'll play two or three rounds just by learning. Yeah, that's what it is, it gives them a break from the slot machines. It's always been that way. And the other thing with bingo, it's a social, It's like a social club. Not so much here every day, but with Super Bingo, probably 35% of our room, they all know each other because they come back, you know, they come two or three times a year. The community is what interests me, too, because I see that with Super Bingo. There's it's people amazing. that there's like five people. They all have T-shirts, and each one of them has like a B and a number. And like, you know, they all spell bingo, and they all walk into the room, and they have their spots, and they're set up, and they have like rituals. It's a big community is what you're saying. Yeah, and then when they call in to book Super Bingo, they'll ask, is Tom playing this time or Al Ellen or whoever? And then Reigns Rains can answer that. Reigns and Elise will put them together <laughs> if, if that's what they want. Ooh. Well, what are your thoughts on some of the other uh, 
competing bingo rooms that are doing some of the the midnight bingos and the the shot bingos. It's where big in England, by the way. They're doing like the rock and roll bingo and the EDM bingo and the some of them they're not playing for real money; it's for prizes. But they're, it's it's skewing really young in terms of people playing f- fun or hyped up bingo. That's what I thought it was because they have where you come and you drink a beer, or you have like your shot while you play. It's it's like kind of uh, midnight uh, bowling, right? I've, I've seen it all, and it's it's suitable to some of the local casinos. But here, look right there. The other side of that we're looking down Fremont Street. is a stage, and that's where they're at. They don't want to come. We can't even get people to come play at 11. That's oh, yeah, and, and, and I remember we tried to do bingo and wine uh, a couple of years ago. No. They, they didn't like it. They didn't want us to change the traditional game, at least for us. But just, it is working in other places, and good luck to them. But we know what works for us. Yeah, it's, uh, you know... We tried an 11 o'clock session here. We do it super, during Super Bingo because we got 800 players sitting there. But during the week, we've had 11 o'clock bingo and had eight people in there. It's That's a losing proposition. Sure. So And there's so much down on Fremont Street for people to do with all the bands every night that uh, I don't think it would work here. Well, well, then we have a few questions from the people of social media. <coughs> Susan S. would like to know, um, she's never played bingo before and wants to know what her first experience will be like from walking into the room, what questions will the attendants ask her, and what does she need to know to play bingo here in Vegas? When you first walk into our bingo room, the first thing that happens is one of, one of the agents will say, can I help you? Any questions? What would you like to know? They'll take the book. They'll show them how to play. If it's really busy, they can get Reigns will take them over, give them a private lesson. Uh, the main thing that the agents will ask them is how much money you want to spend. I mean, you want to spend ten dollars. You want to spend forty. We have a package that I put together that includes every game that we play. That's a special for sixty bucks, and that's what most people buy. For the, for the entire hour, from 11 to 12, 60 yep. bucks. Yep. Every every single game that you're in. Interesting. Nice. And Brian T. Um, is coming for April Super Bingo, and he wants to know if he can take a break during the game and leave his machine or his cards with a friend. No. there's. Uh, he can leave them at the front, but only for one or two games if they take a toilet break. We don't – we're not – in the business of watching cards and machines you can only have one machine so we have we have intermission the regular bingo sessions only an hour long uh we the longest you'll go in super bingo is an hour and a half without a break we can't watch people's but, but machines. well but there is we do allow playing kino during the yes bingo have, game so we do have live kino while you're playing bingo if you wanted to do that right but uh, to if you're play, a real junk you need more action <laughs> You're already at bingo, but you have a side hustle of Kino going. Okay. The rule, standard rule around all of Las Vegas is you can only play one machine. If you have two machines in front of you, in the rule state, two machines, bingo's void. Hmm. Uh, otherwise, the whole room goes crazy. Kind of hmm. like when they went with Gary, <laughs> booing and carrying False bingo. Well, well, thank you, Alden, for coming on our podcast today. We um, appreciate your insight. You really are the godfather of bingo and keno in this city and in Australia, which is amazing. And um, I think people are fascinated by the game and where it's headed in the, uh, into the future. And I think I agree with you that bingo has a very, very bright future in this city for those of us that are still continuing to operate it. Right. So thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you. Gary and Russ, did you guys learn anything today? I learned that bingo is and has a strategy to it and the community behind bingo is what is going to keep driving bingo to downtown and i think that's the point of downtown already the message that we're trying to say is there is a community down here it is a a locals place and you're going to feel right at home yeah i think think it was great to just learn a little bit more about about weldon the man um he you know he's up in bingo he kind of you know he runs everything up there but at the same time, I know that there are 910 guests that are coming to see him, and he's he's a giant teddy bear. I know co- sometimes he comes a little uh, comes off a little hard, but I think he's uh, 
it's, it's great to learn a little bit more about him. Yeah, we hope to see you in our bingo room. And we welcome any questions and feedback you have. You can email us at podcast at plazahotelcasino.com or tweet Jonathan at Jonathan Jossel or tweet the plaza at Plaza Las Vegas. We are on the corner of Main Street at the Plaza Hotel and Casino. See you next time. Thank you.